For this video, we're going to be talking about dynamic templating and the way that Angular lets you modify a directive's template based on the attributes specified. So you can see here that we have a single directive, debug, which simply takes any sort of object and provides some sort of useful output to debug either what the value of that object is or its type or any other useful information about it. However, it can either just be the debug attribute used to define our actual directive, or it can also optionally take this type attribute, which can be used to change slightly the template that we use for our directive. If we look at our JavaScript, what this means is we just have two properties, both user and log, which are two objects that we want to check out debugging. And then I've also created this very simple type filter, which usually just returns the JavaScript type of value for an object. However, for an actual object itself or an array, because JavaScript considers both of them to have a type of object, we use this object to string method, which gives us the bracket object object or bracket object array, depending on the value that we're dealing with. And then finally, we have our directive. And all we've done here is create a simple default type JSON, which is what we'll use if there's no type attribute defined. And then we create an isolate scope that pulls in that value. I find it's usually a good idea anytime you're doing dynamic templating or really templating at all with a directive to use an isolate scope. That way you can be assured of the property names and values that you're going to be working with inside your template and don't have to worry about how they were named or specified on a parent controller of any sort. The magic then really happens inside this template function, which you can see here. This takes two parameters, first t element or template element, and t adders or attributes. The important thing to know with t element is that it's really a read-only clone of whatever the DOM HTML structure was that was pulled in with that directive or that the directive was specified on. And I say read-only because it's important to know that while you can use this to see if it had any children or read other attributes or properties about it, any changes you make to it won't actually be reflected in the final DOM instance that's injected back into the DOM and the actual HTML. Because of this, most of the time, really what you're going to care about is T adders, and that's what we're going to focus on here. If you're familiar with the link function and the adders property that's passed through there, you may find yourself tempted to assume that this can have any sort of interpolated properties. And what I mean by that is if there's any sort of bracket bracket property, you would assume that it can be actually parsed against the scope. However, it's important to remember in this stage, all you're going to get is that actual string, bracket, bracket, property, and not whatever value it has parsed against a parent scope or even the isolate scope itself. We'll get to in a later video how to handle those sort of dynamic properties, but for now, realize that in this case, with this function, all you have access to is the raw string itself. You can see here, other than that, however, the adders is exactly the same. It's the same sort of camel cased, all normalized pulling in of exactly the attributes that were on the DOM element. So we read in the type, and then once we have that, it's a simple switch statement to pick the type of template that we want to render. JSON is very straightforward as is type. But notice now with our array, we've done two things. We've pulled on yet another attribute, this inner type, which again you can see has the camel casing structure. But we've also allowed ourselves to create multiple new directives inside our template. We've not only got an ng repeat, but also new debug directives created inside our initial template. And what this means is we can nest as many different directives as we want inside our dynamic template. Obviously, for optimization reasons, you want to be careful about nesting too many but there's no reason why you can't use this to create different directives and compile differently depending on the type and attributes that you have specified. And then finally, we do this again with full, where we've got two debug directives, first the type and then the standard JSON value output that gives us this full rendering. And then finally, it's always a good idea just in case there's a typo or you make any sort of mistake or forget about a certain type that you thought you had added and don't to have some sort of default to catch any of those errors and give yourself a really quick and easy instance into what's going on, specifically with something like dynamic templating, which can be very difficult to debug if you're not providing yourself these kind of outputs. And then finally, we simply return it. And that's the real key of a dynamic template. You can do whatever you want inside this function as long as you return a string that Angular can use to compile it. So now, if we go ahead and take a look at how this renders, you can see that we do in fact have four very different ways of debugging this info. The standard default, which is just a JSON output type. And again, you can see we have this bracket object object for the sake of JavaScript's type of property. Array, which simply takes each element and iterates over it, printing out each instance as a debugged element. 
And then finally full, which again now gives us object array because that's what our log is and the JSON representation of those messages.